For the purposes of this video, let's say this is Timmy. And this is a bunch of annoying elitists who decide to say things even though they don't know what they're talking about. For efficiency's sake, let's just call them John. So Timmy and John are sitting around a table with a jug of water, and Timmy says to John, Could I have some water? John says, What? Timmy repeats himself, and John tries to stare at him blankly, as if genuinely confused, but can hardly hide the smirk creeping onto his face. Flustered, Timmy just points at the jug, and now John lets on that he understands. Oh, he says victoriously. Water. Come on, Timmy. Say your teas. Now, John saying this, of course, implies that Timmy was not saying his teas. John, please don't say this ever again. Timmy did say his teas. He just didn't use the voiceless alveolar stop, the t sound, which you used when you said water. But it's not like Timmy said war. No, he used the glottal stop, hence war-a. You can hear in the middle of that word how all airflow through the glottis is blocked and then released. Kind of like how the alveolar stop blocks all airflow through the mouth by putting the tongue up on the alveolar ridge and then releasing it. This glottal stop is a phone in its own right and is used as a distinct sound in many languages. And this process of replacing the alveolar stop with the glottal one in English is very common and it's called T-glottalization. It's not an incorrect pronunciation, it's a different pronunciation. That kind of different pronunciation is known as allophony. Specifically, in this case, we see that these sounds are allophones in free variation. That means you can substitute one for the other without changing the meaning of the word. Water is the same as water. Tent is the same as tent. They are completely, or completely, interchangeable. Well, not completely. Timmy couldn't turn around and say, I'm Immy. You can't ache some water. Likewise, in words which generally use glottal stops in English, like the expression, uh-oh, you can't replace those glottal stops with alveolar ones. Tutto doesn't make much sense to anyone. Still, the glottal stop is a perfectly valid way of saying most of your T sounds. I'm going to take a moment here and say, John being confused by what Timmy said can have some validity. It's still wrong to say Timmy didn't say his T's, but if you're used to a dialect of English without T glottalization, it can be genuinely hard to understand what someone is saying, especially when they speak quickly. Second language speakers are almost always taught to pronounce T's as T in every case, so they're very likely to struggle with this. The glottal stop is also somewhat subtler than an alveolar plosive, so those who are hard of hearing can have some difficulties with this, especially if they fall into one of the earlier two categories as well. So, empathy all around, really. People speak differently and are used to different sounds, and sometimes that can hinder communication. Just that little bit. But when you're sitting in an English class and say the word water, and the teacher instantly corrects you, say your T's, they clearly understood what you were saying. Otherwise, they wouldn't have responded like that. They're just being annoying, and technically incorrect. And so is John. John speaks the same dialect of English as Timmy, broadly. He's just being a dick. Also, it's kind of classist, don't you think? To be marking sounds that are associated with the working class as incorrect or inferior? Here we have all these ideas of inferiority, the laziness of dropping these T's, and the working class all meshed together, in the perception of this allophone of the T phoneme. Especially that idea of laziness, a stereotype which has persisted about working class people for... What am I saying? Let's not get political here. 